Alright guys, for this tutorial we're going to be learning how to make a tapered stroke. Uh, first we're going to start and we're going to make a new shape layer and we're just going to draw an ellipse. And if you double click on the pan behind tool, that will center your anchor point. We're going to come down here and we're going to rename our layer to stroke. Okay, now we're just gonna position our layer. It doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna position it up in the top left. And we're gonna put a keyframe on stroke, or scale and position. And we're gonna go forward in time. And we're just going to move our circle. Maybe add a little curve to it. And we're going to also put a keyframe at the end for scale. And then we're going to go somewhere generally in the middle and just put a keyframe on scale and scale it up. And now I'm going back to the beginning and end and I'm just changing those scales to zero. Uh, it was easier before to not have them at zero just so I could see what I was doing. But um, now you can see we have a ball that's just going following the path and scaling up and scaling down. <coughs> we'll uh, ease in and ease out our position. We'll go into the curves and sort of exaggerate those. So now it's got a nice ease in and ease out. And because of the ease, we'll move our, well actually I'll just you know, make this go a little bit quicker so it's a little snappier. Okay, that's looking a little better. Now I'm gonna go into my effects and I'm gonna grab an effect called Echo. I love this effect, you can use it for lots of different things. Um, I'm gonna go in here and change the blend mode. It's kind of, the echo operator is kind of like the blend mode. Maximum basically makes makes it a smooth color. If you had other things on, then the overlaps would create weird things. And I'm just gonna play with the settings here. As you can see, it's creating an echo of our, our circle. It does what the name implies. And if you play around with the time, and basically make the time really, really short, the amount of time the echo is on is, you know, it's kind of the time that the echo is following the original or how long the echo is. Sort of hard to make sense of it, but you get what I'm saying. And then if you play with that and then the number of echoes, you can basically see that you can create uh, a tapered stroke in a sense. And so by increasing or decreasing the number of echoes, that's what gets you a longer or a shorter stroke. And really you can sort of just play with these, the echo time and number of echoes and get a bunch of different results. And as you can see, I came in here and this is me taking that one idea and just repeating it a bunch of times and moving, moving things around a little bit, changing the scale. And it's really easy to make something cool like that. Um, here I'm going to show you another application that you can use for the tapered stroke. Oftentimes you'll have these letters that have thin and thick points in them. And say you want to mask that on so it's writing on. And that can be really tricky to do uh, and make look good. What I used to do was I would uh, draw a stroke and then basically make the stroke cover the entire letter and then use that as a mask, put a trim path on it, and then just reveal it by increasing or decreasing the trim path. The problem with that is that I have to make the mask so thick that I get these weird sections where part of the A that I don't want to show ends up showing up. 
Like those parts shouldn't be visible yet. That little end, that little notch there, and then that notch there shouldn't be visible until the A comes down. And so if you, it might not be a big deal to some people, but if you have a really picky client, they are going to call you out on that stuff and you're gonna to have to find a solution to fix it. Now I'm not saying what I, using the tapered stroke is super, is the easiest method, but it's just a method that I use that I thought looked really nice. It does take a little bit of futzing around, but once you have it locked in, you can sort of change the timing as you want and you don't have to worry about it. So basically we're gonna just take the, ta the same principle of the tapered stroke and apply it to the A. And that means putting keyframes on scale and position and, and basically tracing around the A and making sure that, you know, as long as our circle is a, is a little bit bigger than the width of the A, it'll make a tapered stroke that sort of perfectly covers the A without getting those notches we're, we're trying to avoid with the other um, method. So as you can see here, I just kind of quickly do a first pass. And then for the, for the end, I just do a really hard ease out or ease in so that it looks like as you're finishing the letter, you're kind of slowing down. And then once again, I grab my echo, I turn my time way down, and you're already starting to see how it's covering the A perfectly, but in a way that doesn't, that doesn't overlap parts that we don't want to overlap. So once you get here, you basically just have to go through again and make little tweaks. Like I needed to make the circle slightly bigger, curve my position lines a little bit. But two passes and then you basically have something that's looking really solid. And then once again, I just uh, make the, sh the stroke an alpha mat. And then I kind of play it through. If there's any little hair lines, I'll nudge, things, I'll nudge the keyframes over a little bit. And then if you just dupe your A layer with no alpha mat and have that appear right at the end, then you've got the perfect right on. Now if we, now that we have that sort of locked in, we can pre-compose and uh, come to the very end of the animation, add a keyframe, and you can sort of push and pull to make that longer or shorter. And there you have it. A pretty simple way to use uh, tapered strokes in a lot of different ways.